the second Sunday after the Epiphany, Year C, from the Gospel according to John. What concern is that to you and me? My hour has not yet come. In the name of the one whose hour is always now, even the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our readings for this week address the kind of household familiarity we inherit as children of God from the vantage point of the newly married, people who are still adjusting to their new entitlement as family members. Isaiah speaks to Jerusalem as a conquered city, forsaken by her exiled people and presumed to have been abandoned by God. The prophet speaks of a time to come when the glory of Jerusalem will provide light for all around as a burning torch shines in the darkness, leading the bridal party to the wedding. With the bridegroom eagerly and even anxiously awaiting its appearance as a sign of the bride's arrival. The restored beauty of Jerusalem will be a crown that the groom delights to place upon the head of the people, his bride, rejoicing because Jerusalem's glory provides joy that both God and his people share. Our psalm bids us dwell in that joy and the love from which it springs, love, righteousness, and justice beyond measure, comparable only to mountains, sky, and ocean. The light of God's love enables us to see, know, and draw upon as our own the wellsprings of life and love that we encounter in the world around us. We need this reminder because like the unnamed couple at the wedding feast in Cana, we might feel like our wine is running out. Jesus sees our dilemma. Those huge jars set aside for the rites of purification indicate God's willingness both to use the abundant waters of our tribulations as a means of our purification, but also to transform those waters into the wine of joy and gladness. Mary tells the servants to wait for Jesus' instructions. And what are his instructions? Well, there are a variety of them. Just as Paul tells the Corinthians, there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. It's our experience of life that through the transformative power of God gives rise to our various manifestations of the Spirit for the common good. Wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, discernment of spirits, tongues, and interpretations of tongues, all these manifestations of the Spirit are God's transformative wedding gift to us. And the time to use them is now. In the name of the one who knows our needs even before we ask, even the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.